Make a 12 to 15 centimeter incision midway between the lateral epicondyle and the olecranon. Develop flaps to expose the subcutaneous surface of the ulna and the lateral aspect of the elbow. Approach the lateral aspect of the elbow joint and the radial head through your preferred muscle interval. Locate and mark the anatomical center of the capitellum, just distal to the lateral epicondyle. Distract the joint in order to expose the articular surfaces. Position the distal end of the axis trajectory guide around the trochlea. Insert the aiming pin through the trajectory guide, providing a direct path to the previously marked center of the capitellum. Using fluoroscopy, advance a 1.5 millimeter K wire through the aiming pin into the humerus. Take caution to not pierce the medial cortex. Remove the aiming pin and axis trajectory guide, leaving the K wire in place. Confirm that you have located the axis of rotation using fluoroscopy. Once confirmed, advance a depth gauge over the K-wire. Note the expected axis pin length. Remove the depth gauge and advance the 2.7 mm cannulated drill over the K-wire to the measured depth. Position the ulnar plate assembly on the posterior surface of the ulna, just distal to the tip of the olecranon. Create a pilot hole through the sliding slot angling towards the coronoid and away from the articular surface. Measure and insert a 3.5 mm self-tapping compression screw. Avoiding the joint, drill, measure and insert screws into the proximal and distal holes of the ulnar plate. Assure that the humeral locking screw is pointing proximally to facilitate access. If not, rotate the boom and connecting rod 180 degrees. Insert the appropriately sized axis pin through the boom connector into the humerus. Adjust the boom until it contacts the humerus and tighten the axis pin. Reduce the joint. Placing the patient's hand upon their face facilitates reduction. Once the joint is perfectly reduced, tighten the humeral locking screw. Finally, tighten the ulnar locking screw. Test the patient's range of motion and confirm the proper relationship between the articular surfaces. Remove any bone on the lateral epicondyle that interferes with the free rotation of the boom. Use a pin cutter to remove any excess length from the connecting rod. Verify the patient's range of motion one final time and then close the incision. The internal joint stabilization implant is supplied as a pre-assembled unit including the ulnar plate, humeral locking joint and connecting rod. The IJS implant should be removed when tissue healing has provided sufficient joint stability.